Born to Barbadian parents, Crystal Emmanuel has been to two Olympic Games so far and she's eyeing for a third one. Crystal, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a two-time Olympian. Um, I'm the national record holder in the 200 meters, I'm going for the 100 and 200 uh, this season. Um, I was born uh, in Canada and raised in Barbados. Okay, cool. Tell us a little bit about growing up here and track and field. Uh, growing up here was pretty much uh, fun in terms of track and field. I loved running around. Um, my grandma would always tell me to come inside and stop running with the boys. <laughs> but um, here, living here and, and being able to um, see the different um, athletes and how we uh, grew up in like warm weather and able to run outside all year round is, for me, is amazing. So when exactly did you move to Canada? At what age? Uh, I moved uh, when I was 16. Okay. Yeah. How was it adapting to the cold weather? <laughs> um, so when I was living here, um, I usually go down for uh, summer breaks, winter breaks. So I was used to the snow. I liked the snow, playing in snow. But living there and being in the cold 24-7, I don't like the cold. So coming back here to um, get a bit of warm weather and, and the beautiful beaches, um, is is amazing for me. When did you make the decision to become a professional athlete? Um, when I moved back to um, Toronto, um, I kind of missed running because I took a year off when I moved back to Toronto and I seen that I didn't like staying home on, on afternoons or not going to the mall and being able to train on the track. Um, I was missing track and field a little bit so I set my eyes out and, and joined the track team in um, Canada. Okay, cool. And representing Canada, how does that feel, the feeling like? Uh, it's an amazing feeling. Um, putting on the Maple Leaf and, and being able to compete with the best in the world and, and still being able to represent um, Barbados as well, but behind the shadows, but that's okay. Um, because, you know, I come back, I try to get back to, to Barbados and and meet and greet with everybody and, and let them know that I'm still a Bayesian. <laughs> Tell me about your training. How vigorous is it? Uh, for me, I have an amazing coach, uh, Charles Allen. Um, our, our team is a pretty strong team and, and make sure that I can train every single day without injuries, minus the cold. Um, for me, training is really hard mentally and physically, so um, I have to make sure that everything's in place um, back home and here. Um, to make sure that my body is ready. Although I don't have my team with me, I still have to put things in place that um, I'm ready to train. You mentioned you don't have your team, but your mom is always by your side. How important is it to have her there? Uh, very, very important. Um, I almost lost her in 08, and that took a bit of my time away from track because I wasn't sure where my future was heading after my mom left uh, Barbados to go back to Toronto for some health, um, some health stuff. So I, every day that I see her and I, I touch the track, I make sure that she knows that I'm doing it for her and for my whole family. Um, and her being here every step of the way, not missing a race, not missing an interview um, is, is, the support I always wanted and I have it so I'm blessed to have her here in Barbados as well to see me train um, and so she can tell coach the bad stuff because <laughs> she knows that I'm not going to tell him that I was crawling on the track because I was tired but having her is, is good for me. You've been to two Olympics before what are some of the lessons that you have learned? Mm. <laughs> A lot of lessons. Um, not to doubt myself anymore. For 2012, I doubted myself and missed the chance to be in an Olympic final. Um, and for 2016, it brought things together for Tokyo because I was able to race into a uh, semifinals again, but with more of a confidence. And also, I raced all the way to the end and not doubt that I could make the final so in Tokyo I'm hoping to see myself in that final. What's the feeling like stepping out onto the arena with thousands of track and field fans? What exactly is going through your mind every time you take to the stage? Uh, for me it's my execution and what my coach um, practiced and, and taught me to do um, when I step out there and then 
hearing that we have so many fans that are cheering us on, it gives us like, it gives me more um, a good feeling and to perform at the best I can with the top in the world. And when I step out there and I look into the crowd or I can hear the crowd, it's like, okay, it's, it's showtime. Give them a show and let them see that what we're working so hard for uh, each and every day. You would have competed against the likes of Elaine Thompson, Shelly Ann Fraser Price and Dina Asher Smith. What is it like standing next to these guys in blocks? Uh, it's amazing to see that we have powerful women that can uh, step out and show that us females still, we can do anything that we set our mind to and being able to perform with them and be in um, the same environment and see how they do it and go out and be like, okay, I'm the best too because I'm racing with the best. And What does it mean to you being a female in sport? Uh, it's amazing. Um, Every time I step on the track, I want to be able to inspire and empower um, the generation that's coming up behind me um, to believe in themselves and not give up on sport because they're female. You can do anything you set your mind to in any sport. What are some of the main challenges that you encounter? <sighs> uh, a lot of questions <laughs> about um, like being a bit muscular or being... Um, can you be beautiful and still run track? And I say yes, because that's why I call myself Queen Beast. Um, a lot of people say, why do I call myself that? And I'm like, I'm beautiful, I'm a queen. And when I get at the end of the line, each and every race, I make a scream. So I'm like, I'm a beast regardless of if I'm female, you know, like I step out there as the queen I am and show them that I could be a beast on the track, on and off the track. In terms of your accomplishments and achievements, what would you say is your most memorable moment on the track so far? Memorable? <sighs> um, I would say... Mm, that's a tough one. I think I have a lot. <laughs> um, for me, being able to make my second Olympic Games, um, I had a bit of doubts for 2016 um, because I wasn't sure if I belonged in in my particular race which was the 200 meters and uh, being able to sit with my coach and be like okay I I can do it and I went out and I made the semifinals like hey I can do this and I made my semifinals I did have a bit of a sad time because I didn't make the final but my coach said to me like listen like look back at that race and see where you went wrong and I was like okay I see where I went wrong um, and I was still proud of myself because I made the Olympic team once again and then still came out with a learning lesson so that accomplishment was was pretty big for me okay cool talk to me about beating the the Canada record <laughs> um, I wasn't sure I did um, I just ran the race and then I crossed the line and I'm like, okay, that's it. Um, I won. And my coach is like over the fence screaming like, you broke the record. I'm like, huh? He's like, you broke the record. I'm like, no, I didn't. Like I, the whole race, I felt like I ran well. I did everything I needed to do. And when I crossed the line, I was like, oh, that feels kind of slow. And then the meet director was like, yeah, Chris Emanuel uh, just broke the Canadian record. I was like, oh, this is real. And then I see it on paper and I'm like, oh, it's real. And I still, to this day, don't believe that I did because it felt so relaxed. And I was like, okay, can I do this again? And it was amazing. It didn't sink in until I was on the plane. And I was like, I broke the Canadian record. And I was like, like, it was amazing because I knew I could do it, but it took just going out and executing and not putting too much pressure on myself. Looking ahead. The Tokyo 2020 games are a couple months away. Talk to me about your aspirations. Uh, for this games, I have big goals, um, but I fall back on just training hard and executing great races at the uh, Olympic Games. For me, I'm doing, I'm aiming to do all three, one, two, and four by one. Um, I want to make finals in all of them, um, but it's going to take a different beast to do that. <laughs> and I'm, I think I'm, I'm pretty ready to do, to do that. Um, and I have sights on making it to the podium.